What's going on guys, welcome to the video. We are going to take a look at a few short clips from yesterday's politics live show that featured rejects from both Labour and the Conservatives in Pfizer Shaheen, the Labour candidate at the last election that had Ramona's believing she could oust Ian Duncan Smith from his Chingford seat, but in the end failed miserably much like Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party. While, from the Tories, we had Rory the Soy Boy Stewart, who was booted out of the Tories for betraying his party, the people, and democracy, because he did not like the fact that Boris Johnson was actually going to take us out of the EU. And personally, I think, he is a secret Lib Dem in Tory clothing. As you would expect, he had his moments during the show, but in all honesty, it's Pfizer who once again is giving us the usual Labour bullshit about Corbyn being vilified, along with having no clue about British patriotism, and naturally defends Labour's policies being popular, or at least needed in the UK, when as another guest points out, Labour's left-wing ideology is only supported by a minority in the UK, because of course, we are not batshit crazy, like Pfizer and the rest of the momentum losers who back the Corbyn project to the hill. It would seem once again, the last election has not taught these idiots a single thing, and I absolutely love it. So, let's check out our first clip from the show. Now, we haven't um, seen Rory since he left uh, Parliament, or Pfizer um, since voters returned Ian Duncan Smith in Chingford. Um, I suppose you could say, without being too cruel, two people rejected mm. um, in Pfizer's case by the electorate, in Rory's case by his own party. David, what part did Brexit play in the Tories' success at the election? Oh, I think an enormous part. Um, you know, we, we had the, the political system had not been delivering on the referendum result of 2016. Um, and there, there were a, 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 you know, a very um, large proportion of the electorate who felt pretty cross about that. Um, and the, 2017, I mean, I think the surprise in terms of, um, I mean, you know, the, the, the Corbyn tradition is a very, very small minority tradition. I mean, the kind of hard left tradition in Britain is not, has never been very strong. The surprise in a way was that they did so well in 2017. And, and actually the kind of the Theresa May, Nick Timothy, strategy of appealing more to kind of left behind Britain almost won. So that a lot of those seats were only sort of two or three thousand votes. They'd made some progress. And it was the kind of fi final final push. Um, so I think um, on, on the left that that sort of helped. I mean, there was never any great enthusiasm for Corbyn and, of course, and the Brexit thing was an additional factor. Um, and, I, and I think obviously in the case of Rory, um, you know, he now represents in some ways a sort of redundant tradition in the Tory party. I mean... The, Do you the, agree? You are redundant. Your wing of the party is. <laughs> it, it, it's definitely true that the tradition that I represented, which was uh, the more centre ground of the party, uh, most of us are gone. Most of us have either None of the resigned one. or been thrown out of politics. So I am now very, very clear that the reason I'm running in London is I think that this is a place where you can escape some of this ideology. That in the end, questions on clearing your rubbish, making the tubes run on time, are not very much Labour Conservative questions. They're questions of running things well. And I think the only way the centre ground of politics can rebuild itself is through competence, through action, through getting on with things. Because if we keep talking, theory, we're doomed. I've got to say, it is funny to hear Joe Coburn point out both Pfizer and Rory got rejected, or in Rory's case, ejected because he was booted out of the Tory party and did not stand for re-election like the other Tory traitors, who also got rejected when they stood as independents. You can actually see the awkward smiles on their face when Joe calls them both rejects. Quality shit if you ask me. Obviously, as I said earlier, Pfizer was rejected along with Corbyn at the election, as she tried to oust Brexiteer Ian Duncan Smith and obviously failed miserably despite Ramona claims leading up to the election that she was going to win, because I'm guessing Twitter told them so. Much like Joe Swinton thinking she would win the election, when in actual fact, she couldn't even keep her own seat. Journalist David Goodhart points out the obvious regarding Labour's Brexit policy that sealed the deal on them getting annihilated at the last election. Though, I'm sure, even without Brexit, the Tories would have still had a decent majority. Because Labour's policies are, like I said, batshit crazy. Along with most of their MPs, who run around screaming the wokest nonsense you could imagine. But like he said about the Corbyn tradition being a very small minority, 
the woke liberal ideology is also followed by an equally small minority that is just very vocal on Twitter and is made up by a large group of unemployable gender studies rejects that have all the time in the world to rage on Twitter or attend their pathetic little rallies crying about some imagined oppression like the worthless fuck pigs we all know them to be. It's a very small minority that will never be supported by the majority. He is also right when he talks about Rory the Soy Boy Stewart representing a redundant side of the Tory party. And in my opinion, that is the traitorous side that goes against the electorate, their party and the will of the British people like we see in the last parliament from the likes of Grieve, Gork, Hammond and the rest of them. Some even went a step further and joined the Liberal Democrats. And as for Rory's claims that he is the centre ground, I'm not sure about that. But if I'm being honest, Rory Stewart probably would make a good London Mayor. Following on from Sadiq Khan, it would be impossible not to be. The most incompetent imbecile in the world is going to make a better London Mayor than the stone cold loser that is in office now, as the God Emperor Donald Trump so rightly put last summer. But let's move on, Pfizer and reality are about to go their separate ways. Are you too ideological? Was that the problem? You were too hard left? No, I don't think that was the problem. I think there were all kinds of issues about messaging, about not dealing with the sort of toxic um, profile that had been built of, of Jer Jeremy Corbyn. And I think that we're too reductive sometime, again, in this geographical split of who voted uh, Conservative and who voted Labour. Brexit was a big factor. So to the extent to which this also might be an election that sticks out in history as being a bit different. Um, but also, you know, can you imagine saying to Liverpudlians that they're all also metropolitan elite? I mean, it's like it's, this conversation is just becoming so ridiculous in terms of this North-South divide. There's lots of people in the North that voted for Labour. And yes, of course, there are some seats um, that we have to look at where the work wasn't being done on the ground, mm. where, where there hasn't been investment for decades. Yeah. And yeah. people in those seats didn't understand that the last 10 years um, it, that, that fault lay, lay with a Conservative government. And that, again, is where Labour got it wrong in terms of talking and communicating about what was happening. Yeah, the, the Tories had the advantage that they that. could sort of... So in that clip, Pfizer and her denial of reality hits level 100 instantly. Anyone with half a brain cell, or at least one foot still planted in the real world, would know that the hard left ideology that she is an ardent fan of was resoundingly rejected by the British electorate last month, along with Jeremy Corbyn and a lot of former Labour MPs and candidates like Pfizer here, because of the left-wing nonsense the party stands for, along with obviously Brexit and Jeremy Corbyn himself, which of course, this Corbyn Easter trout is in complete denial about, instead claiming it was not getting their message across and Jeremy Corbyn being vilified by the media. As usual, they lay the blame on everybody else, but in true Labour fashion, she actually calls former Labour voters stupid. You all heard her say a lot of people in the seats they lost didn't understand that the faults from the last 10 years lay at the feet of the Conservatives of course referring to austerity, when actually the fault of that lays at the hands of Blair and Brown governments. The Tories didn't really have much choice given the debt the last Labour government left us in, which is something Labour governments always seem to do. Luckily, this country dodged a bullet when the electorate rejected Labour and candidates like Pfizer, who will call voters stupid for voting any other way but Labour. But let's move on, we've got plenty to get through yet. What about the issue of patriotism? Because that was talked about a lot in the aftermath of the election, and David talks about sort of culture, Rory talks about ideology. Was there not enough patriotism in what Labour was offering and too much ideology culturally? I mean, look, patriotism can mean all kinds of things to different people. Well, what does it and mean to people you? can be, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud to be British, but at the same time, um, we've got to allow room for what Britishness is today. And I think, I think it's true that there has been an, a type of culture war that has been waged. I think that there's been all kinds of ways in which tropes have been de developed. So, for instance, about the white working class, a, re a reductive trope, about pit pit pitting them against the working class immigrant population, for instance, and blaming each other in the way in which that's played out in our papers um, and in, in our narrative of how this country works and doesn't work. And I think what we haven't done is, as the Labour Party, and this is really one of the distinctions when you looked at what was happening, so the Conservatives came out and sort of had Brexit and had more stop and search, you know, have, have said in the Brexit deal now that they're not going to allow refugee children to reunite. That's their kind of cultural offer. And we spoke much more about the economics. And we didn't talk about 
um, a kind of a Britain with that multiculturalism. We didn't make that case about yeah. about our kind of view I more you, socially no, I think, of I mean, the UK. I and I think that's would, true. People... Labour and patriotism. Not exactly two words that go hand in hand, as Pfizer shows us almost instantly. Patriotism is being patriotic to your country and the people who feel the same about it. That's what it means, you idiot. End of story. Only Labour shit weasels who hate the UK and its culture would ever consider saying shit like patriotism is so different to so many different people. No, it's just because you don't like it, love. It's about being proud of your country, or in our case, the Union of Nations that make up the United Kingdom, and the willingness to defend the country and its culture that has given us all life. Her saying, I'm proud to be British, but tells me she is likely not proud to be British at all. Much like Corbyn, she just knows saying anything other than that is a level of stupid she won't even go to. But the stupidness does continue from her, talking about what Britishness is today, when in the real world, Britishness is still the same. It's just her warped view of the Britain she wants that she is talking about there. And to say she thinks a culture war has been waged is a light way of putting it. Politicians and woke tosspots like her have been waging a culture war on us all for years trying to destroy British culture, claiming that it's bad and has oppressed people for years, while they all sit there reaping the benefits of said British cultural history that they hate so much. You know, pot and kettle comes to mind. Now, as you would expect, she blames the media for all this, where personally, I don't blame the media as much for the culture war that's currently going on. I blame politicians and political parties for either allowing it to happen or taking part in it, as we have seen many times over recent years. But as I'm sure you will all agree, British and American culture is under constant assault these days. And the recent results in elections was hopefully the British and American people starting to push back against that shit. But you did see something in that clip. The way David Goodhart looks at her when she talks about their failure to push multiculturalism at the last election must prove to everyone that she is delusional. You are being questioned about Labour and being patriotic or their lack of it and this is what you come out with. They are so focused on the woke PC nonsense that they see on Twitter, they actually think that this is what real people want. When going down that route is part of what sunk them at the election last month. And to me, she just proves that Labour cares solely about every other woke culture in the world rather than the British one. The UK has more than enough multiculturalism, I think. Don't you guys? But let's continue though, because we've got a few more to go through. I think people that's would, true. People regarded Jeremy Corbyn as someone who, who didn't really like his own country. And, and I think that's probably largely true. You know, he, he thinks the US is the evil empire. I mean, most people in Britain are quite fond of America. I mean, you I mean, know. But a lot of people he, don't like Trump as well, uh, though. Well, of course, and they of don't course, want yeah. us to be going um, following you know, him into any But, you know, he didn't wars. know what time the, the, you know, the Queen's um, Christmas message was yeah, broadcast. And all, don't all, watch that. I mean, that's the thing, actually. No, the no, country's no, heavily polarised. These things are not I don't think these things are trivial. I mean, and, and Labour was far too connected to kind of woke metropolitan Britain, you know, the idea that the Lake District is too white, you know. I mean, you know, these are the kind of things that your party is associated with, I'm afraid. So David Goodhart points out the blindingly obvious that Jeremy Corbyn does not like the UK or the USA and therefore is not seen as patriotic in the slightest. And given what he did at Prime Minister's Questions last week, I'd say he is more patriotic to Iran and his relatively unknown cordite fried general friend who blew up overnight last weekend than he is the UK. But given he is Iran's man in the UK, it should shock absolutely no one. But Pfizer clearly suffers from Trump derangement syndrome, because when David points out that people in the UK actually like America, she claims most people don't like Trump, which I don't think is true. Most people on Twitter don't like Trump. That does not mean, of course, that people in the UK don't like him, no matter how much the media and butthurt snowflakes might say it does. I mean, you see at the end of that clip there just how butthurt Pfizer gets when David points out that Labour is far too connected to the woke liberal metropolitan areas of this country. You know, the type of shit weasels that think the Lake District is too white. I guess she don't like being called out for being a race baiting fuck pig on BBC Politics Live. The salt is strong with this one though, and I bloody love it. Well done, David, for bringing it out. So I, I do think that again, to return to this question of whether there is a future for the centre ground, it has to be taking back from the right patriotism, taking back from the left 
compassion. We have to find the energy, the belief, the values, the anger in the centre ground. If we allow that, I just mean, to I go on the right to left, we're going to get there. Does Labour take slowly. that ground? Would a Keir Starmer-type figure take it and attract people like you or people that would have voted for you in the next parliament? And I think Boris Johnson should be quite worried that if... We know this point has been made many times. People lent their votes to the Conservatives. If they don't see anything and they actually have Keir Starmer or somebody like him that they think is a bit more centre ground in their mind... I mean, I think, I, I think had... Right, so Laura Hughes is completely deluded with her claim that Boris Johnson will be scared of the Ramonian shit weasel known as Sir Keir Starmer because he might draw people back who voted for Boris at the last election. But let's not forget, this Corbyn front bencher pushed Labour for a second referendum. So there goes Leave voters. Boris Johnson will also tear apart any attempts he makes to appeal to the working class. Since Labour cannot scream we are for the people and against the elite with Sir Anything at the start of the name of the leader. And let's also not forget, he is from London. Like Corbyn, he only appeals to the metropolitan areas, so not someone Boris Johnson is going to need to worry about. In fact, he will make it easy for Boris, providing of course he doesn't fuck it up himself, which is always possible for Boris Johnson or any politician for that matter. It doesn't matter how centre grand this lot claim him to be, we all know he's not. Earlier on today, before recording this video, he actually launched his campaign and claimed he was going to start a radical Labour movement. So, essentially, he's two cheeks of the same arsehole from Jeremy Corbyn. He won't appeal to a lot of those Labour voters lost in the last election. And he certainly won't appeal to everyone who voted for Corbyn in the last election, even if he is centre ground as they claim. Which we obviously know he's not now. I expect Labour voters will go to the Lib Dems in that situation, or the Greens, meaning the Tories keep a decent majority. That's the way I see it happening anyway. I could be wrong though. Personally, I don't think Starmer is a threat to anyone, but Labour's vote share at the next election, much like the rest of the leadership candidate. Those that are not two cheeks of the same arsehole to Jeremy Corbyn are completely unelectable for a variety of reasons. Jess Phillips is a perfect example of that. But let's check out the final clip we are going to go over in this video. The Keir Starmer, I don't know Keir Starmer, but David Miliband or whoever had been running against Boris, it would have been much more difficult for him because I think there is a huge desire in this country for sensible, moderate, pragmatic centre ground politics. We don't want to be faced with a choice. But the problem is, actually, is that the between real Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn. The real challenge really is when you look at regional inequality, when you look at climate breakdown, when you look at levels of inequality in this country and what's happened on austerity, you do need the big uh, policy change that the Labour Party was putting forward. And um, that is where, so even Keir Starmer saying he wants to keep loads of those policies because they speak yeah. to the challenges. And I think one of the things we'll find in the next five years is one, the scale of investment will be nowhere near um, enough to, <coughs> to undo but those long-term inequalities in this what, country. What and also that we won't, Pfizer, that Brexit what, won't solve them. Well, to finish it up, Pfizer is off again, claiming the country needs Jeremy Corbyn's and the Momentum Lunatic's radical socialist policy change that would send the country into the shitter, much like it did Labour's vote share. It was resoundingly rejected by the country because we did not want or need it. And let me tell you, babbling on about this imagined inequality and austerity that Labour's uncontrolled spending created is only going to ensure Labour do not ever get elected. It seems they will never learn that their idea of equality is to make groups of people they dislike subhuman, as the left has spent the last god knows how long trying to do to white men. While it annoys me to a certain degree, it does make sure lunatics like this don't end up in power. So I guess every cloud has a silver lining at least. Keeping these socialist lunatics out of government has surely got to be the greater good. Eventually a government might stand up for common sense, but I won't hold my breath on that one. Even the Tories are far too woke for my liking, and they are being called hard right to prove what an absolute clown world we actually live in, which Pfizer here embodies entirely, even cementing what I said earlier about Sir Keir Starmer being no threat to Boris Johnson, when she points out he will keep a lot of Labour's lunatic policies going into the next election. So please keep digging that whole Labour, it's not quite deep enough yet, to fit all of your stupidity in. But guys, it seems delusional salty Labour bints with no grasp on reality are here to stay. Rory was fairly quiet during this one, with limited bullshit being spewed by him. 
but I don't think he needed to, considering Pfizer is clearly in her own world and spews enough bullshit for any show. Even when people point out the work metropolitan nonsense is costing Labour votes, she doubles and triples down on it like an imbecile. Long may it continue is all I will say to that. But on that note guys, I am going to end the video there. I have started doing live streams and uploading gaming related content on my second channel when I have some free time. So if you want to come over and have a chat during one of the live streams, have an interest in gaming content on YouTube, or just want to support me there because you are a legend, you can subscribe to that channel using the link in the video description below. It is greatly appreciated, guys. But as always, I want to thank our YouTube, PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar members for supporting the channel, along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Leave a like, subscribe with a notification bell, and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I will see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. Ramon! Ramon!